Hello guys, welcome to An Academy Studios Bridge. Uh, let's proceed with this gate questions series that I'm covering right now. I am covering this uh, these gate questions, previous year gate questions that they asked from mechanics of solids. And in mechanics of solids, I have already covered the axial loading. Now I'm gonna cover torsional loading. In torsional loading, again, we have already seen and we have already solved one mark problems. Now we're going to solve in this particular in this particular session, we are going to solve two marks problems. Okay. So let's go ahead, just in case if you don't know about me, I'm Marut Tiwari, I did my master's from IIT Kharagpur. I've been a topper of entire campus, so I've, I've received multiple awards there, and I cracked gate mechanical engineering multiple times, and I'm a proud author of the book, Gate in 75 Days. If you go to Amazon or Flipkart, or just on Google, if you type Marut Tiwari book, or gate in 75 days that will be visible to you you can also read fantastic reviews that the book has the that the book has gained that the book has earned it and uh, of course it's available at a very reasonable price and it's very much helpful just in case if you are preparing for gate 2021 please go ahead and you know start learning from that particular book and i'm al always here to help you in your further learning Guys, currently I'm associated with Unacademy. Unacademy is having a pool of outstanding educators. And you see, there are so many reasons that I can give you. There are so many advantages that you will gain if you start preparing for your GATE exam through Unacademy platform. You can experience number of courses for free and you can have flexible schedule. You can have language of your choice. You can do unlimited practice. You can watch them as many times as you want and then my dear friends you can chat with the educator you can ask your doubts and educator can conduct live polls just like in class we ask that okay how many of you believe option a is correct and how many of you believe option b is correct and students raise their hand similarly so it's gonna feel just like a real real live class but at the same time you're getting the flexibility of learning from from anywhere and learning at any time now you see there are so many reasons out there and there are so many packages monthly packages there and then three months you can go for six months package also then you can go for 12 months and 24 months packages 12 months and 24 months packages are the most cost effective packages because the 12 months package is available at a one time payment of 25,000 and the 24 months package is available at a one time payment of 40,000. If you divide it, if you divide it to monthly basis, then my dear friends, this one is going to be, I mean, a two year package, two year subscription package. Is going to cost you effectively just 1667 rupees per month and this one this yearly package is going to cost you just 2083 rupees per month in fact at the time of subscription you can use my code empty live at the time of subscription you can use my code empty live and if you use my code at the time of subscription then you'll get 10% additional discount and after getting 10% additional discount my dear friends this 24 months package this 24 months package is going to be available at 36,000 rupees and the 12 months package is going to be available at 12 months package is going to be available at 22,500 rupees if you further take the cost effectiveness then my dear friends for two year package effectively you just pay 1500 rupees per month and for one year package effectively you pay just 1875 rupees per month now this is unmatchable this is unprecedented you must go for it like if you are preparing for gate exam then there is no match there is no replacement of this why because my dear friends 
because my dear friends you think about it in 1800 rupees per month you're not going to get such an effective gate preparation package i'll tell you that that there is one big reason that is unmatchable as far as any other classroom coaching program or any other online or whatever is concerned and that is that unacademy listen this is the probably biggest difference that an academy is providing to you that for one course you're getting multiple educators all right one course is being taught by mr a also it is being taught by mr b also it is being taught by mr c also so it is you it is the student who is going to decide that which course from which you know from which educator i'm going to learn this is the choice this is the freedom this is the power that an academy gives you that no other platform is giving you right now so guys you can choose your educator like which course you're going to learn from which educator one course is available from multiple educators out there multiple teachers are available all right so guys this is the best way to learn this is the easiest way to learn uh, for your entire mechanical engineering uh, let us now go ahead and uh, just in case if you have not installed an academy learning app yet go ahead install it and select gate as your goal and after selecting gate as your goal just go ahead subscribe for for the packages and start guys now let us talk about our topic our topic is torsional loading and i told you that there are three four things that you'll have to keep in mind there are three four things that you will have to keep in mind i'm sorry and these three four things are number one the load how do you calculate the load if you have attended my previous session and also my axial loading session you know i told you that load must be calculated from either side wherever you are calculating the load you're going to look either at the left side or you're going to look at the right side then from any one given side you're going to sum up every single thing and then my dear friends the second thing that we must keep in mind is the shear stress formula to calculate the shear stress at any given general location r you use this torsion equation but mostly we'll be interested in maximum shear stress formulas mostly will be interested in maximum shear stress values and then 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 we have angle of twist formula angle of twist formula is tl by gj t into l divided by g into j which is strikingly similar yesterday i mean in the previous session i told you that the way you write pl by ea the same way you write tl by gj like you have load load length length material property material property cross sectional dimensions cross sectional dimensions load load length length material property material property cross sectional dimensions and cross sectional dimensions so guys this is very similar and that's the beauty of the subject because you have if you're going to attend my crash course on mechanics of solids that is going to start on 8th of december on an academy learning app then you will realize that how beautiful and how wonderful this subject is all right so on 8th of december lock lock the dates on 8th of december uh, starting at 9:30 in the morning i'll start a crash course on mechanics of solids on an academy learning app and also don't forget to catch me on uh, uh, like tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock with a special class on free vibrations i'm going to take and i'm going to tell you a very quick and a very easy way to understand the concept and to apply that concept on the problems of free vibrations so don't forget to catch me tomorrow at 7 pm in a special class this special class is going to be a free class this special class would be available to you to watch for free there is no subscription fee for that so don't forget to catch me there now as of now let's go ahead and try solving the two marks problems one mark problems as you know we have already completed one mark problems we have 
already completed in the previous session. Now guys, we will try solving two marks problems. So let us start with this one. Let us start with this one that they asked in 2004. That they asked in 2004. We have a stepped shaft that is subjected to something happened. We have a stepped shaft that is subjected to I'm sorry. That is subjected to 10 Newton meter of twisting moment. And then for M to N and then N to O and O to P, some torsional stiffness is given. And that is given as 20 Newton meter per radian, 30 Newton meter per radian, and 60 Newton meter per radian. Now, what is this torsional stiffness? Like before we solve the problem, let us first of all deal with this puzzle that what exactly is torsional stiffness? What exactly is this torsional stiffness? How do you define stiffness? Like what is a basic definition of stiffness? Basic definition of stiffness is always load divided by deformation. But just in place, just in place, if it doesn't click, just in place, if this definition of load divided by deformation doesn't click, then your presence of mind can still help you to crack this. How? Look at the unit. The unit of this torsional stiffness is given to you as Newton meter per radian. So Newton meter means torque and radian means angle of twist. Now from the formula of theta, from the formula of theta TL by GJ, you know, T by theta is gonna be what? T by theta is gonna be GJ by L. So you will get T by theta is equal to GJ by L. This is what you're going to get. Now guys, so we have something like this available here. Torsional stiffness is T by theta and T by theta is equal to GJ by L. Now let's go ahead and try solving this particular problem. They are asking theta at P with respect to M. With respect to M, they are asking theta at P. So naturally you are covering entire length. Naturally, you are covering entire length. I'm going to break it into theta mn and theta no and theta op. Now, you can very clearly see that you can very clearly see that whether you look at mn or you look at no or you look at op, every single time, my dear friends, every single time we have the same twisting moment available and either side you'll have to use so you'll have to use either side either side and either side and from either side you get the same value 10 newton meter 10 newton meter and 10 newton meter so t value is similar 10 newton meter 10 newton meter 10 newton meter and then you have tl by gj for first segment tl by gj for second segment and TL by GJ for third segment. I'm not writing T1, T2, T3. Why? Because you can see that T is equal. Using the concept of either side, you have same twisting moment, same twisting moment, same twisting moment. So guys, we can go ahead and try solving this. Same twisting moment you have and that is nothing but 10. Now what is GJ by L? I already described that GJ by L is nothing but torsional stiffness. And torsional stiffness for the first segment is given as 20. Torsional stiffness for the second segment is given as 30. Torsional stiffness for the third segment is given as 60. So this is what you get. This is what you get. If you solve this, end of the day you will get one radian. Congratulations, you get two marks. So this was a very simple problem where total angle of twist has had to be calculated and we just need to know that what is stiffness. Stiffness is 
load divided by deformation and t by theta is nothing but gj by l so we used torsional stiffness values to calculate the gj by l gj by l and gj by l values as an eighth problem let us try solving this particular problem that they asked in 2005 this 2005 problem we'll try solving let me describe the problem first of all you have this particular shaft which is fixed here and which is which is also fixed here and in the coupling i mean at the junction we are applying at the junction itself we are applying a twisting moment here at the junction we are applying a twisting moment let's say t then they are asking the relation between the twisting moment resistance available at a and the twisting moment resistance available at c they are asking the relation between ta and tc so how do you get it how do you get it sir do remember whenever you have a shaft fixed at both the ends whenever you have a shaft fixed at both the ends do remember if you have a shaft fixed at both the ends my dear friends please do remember just one simple condition and that one simple condition is that theta overall must be equal to zero apart from equilibrium condition please do remember this compatibility condition that theta overall must be equal to zero if you have attended my slope deflection session then you know that there also in propped cantilever beam i told you about the delta or y is equal to zero at extra support so just like we have solved propped cantilever beams similarly this indeterminate structure can be approached can be solved if you just remember this one condition that overall theta has to be zero why overall theta has to be zero because one end is fixed another end is fixed and you know from fix to fix no deformation will be allowed with respect to a fixed body another fixed body is not going to displace any any way so guys you just remember this thing and remembering this thing let us try solving this particular problem let us try solving this particular problem we have a shaft made in two segments and at the junction we are applying a twisting moment t naturally that twisting moment will be naturally the twisting moment will be resisted here let's say this resistance is t a and let's say this resistance is t c then you can write what you can write you can write theta overall is equal to zero which is the compatibility condition and then theta overall can be broken into theta a b plus theta b c theta a b plus theta b c is equal to zero now how can you write theta a b how can you write theta a b and how can you write theta b c theta a b you can write as t a b and length is equal for a b segment and b c segment g is equal but j is not equal j th for this one j value is pi d 4 by 32 and then we have torque in b c segment length is equal g is equal for this one j will become 2d raised to 4 divided by 32 now you see uh, there are number of things that will go from here there are number of things that will get cancelled out for example l is a common factor g is a common factor pi is a common factor 32 is a common factor d power 4 is also a common factor so what are we left with we are left with just t a b here and here we are left with t b c divided by 16 so guys we get 16 times t a b we get 16 times t a b plus t b c is equal to 0 now what is t a b and what is t b c value once again i'm going to use the same concept that i've been repeating number of times 
what is TAB and what is TBC? What is the torque in AB segment and what is the torque in BC segment? Either side is the concept, you know, that either side, either side and either side you're going to use to calculate the twisting moment. So in AB segment, the twisting moment value is minus TA. In AB segment, if I calculate from the left side, the twisting moment value is okay the twisting moment value is minus ta and for bc segment calculating from the right side is easier though you can calculate from the left side also so calculating from the right side you get plus tc so in ab segment it is minus ta and in bc segment it is plus tc i'm using right hand rule to write the sign i'm using if the thumb goes towards the section then twisting moment is negative if the thumb goes away from the section away from the section then the twisting moment is positive so you get tc is equal to 16 ta you get tc is equal to 16 ta which is third option available congratulations once again you get two marks now let us try solving this 2009 problem you see in gate people say problems are not repeated but let me tell you that whether problems are repeated or not i don't know but concepts are certainly repeated why because look at this 2005 problem both end fixed Look at this 2009 problem, both ends fixed. All right, and by the way, this remaining length is gonna be 3L by 4. Now, they are asking that what is the maximum shear stress here? To calculate the shear stress, do mind it that we can't use this T naught value here. This T naught value which we are applying, by the way, let me just try it in correct sense. Uh, it's coming out like this. So in the correct sense, this T naught value is T naught is actually acting like this and to oppose to this we will have some twisting moment resistance some resistance getting developed at each of the fixed supports. So at each fixed support we will have a resistance. Now you know the total resistance is equal to total action so using equilibrium using equilibrium you will get total resistance which is t1 plus t2 is equal to total action and this is one equation that you get out of here from here you get one equation now guys let us use the compatibility what is the compatibility compatibility i told you that in such problems where you have where you have both ends fixed in such problems where you have both ends fixed all you will have to remember is that theta overall is equal to zero now this theta overall you can write as theta 1 plus theta 2 where this L by 4 length is representing this L by 4 length is representing segment 1 and this L 3L by 4 length is representing the segment 2 so theta 1 you can write as T1 into L1 divided by G into J and then my dear friends for this one you can write as T2 into L2 divided by G into J but overall theta has to be 0. Overall theta has to be 0. Now you see L by 4 and L by 4 g and g and j and j they are going to get cancelled what about the t1 value and what about the t2 value what is the twisting moment value in the first segment and what is the twisting moment value in the second segment my dear friends please keep this in mind that either side is the concept how do you calculate the load at any given section you calculate the load here you have applied t naught so how do you calculate the load at any given section? You calculate the load from either side. 
and from either side you have minus t1 like t1 is actually minus t1 and then everything has been cancelled here what about t2 what is t2 t2 is minus t1 plus t0 just in case if we calculate from the left side then t2 is minus t1 plus t0 t2 is minus t1 plus t0 is equal to 0 now you get 3t1 is equal to t0 3t1 is equal to t0 which will give you t1 is equal to yes t1 is equal to t0 by 4 no 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 this is 3 here this is 3 here so if you solve it with 3 then you will get t1 is equal to if you solve it with 3 then you will get t1 is equal to 3 t0 by 4 and guys if you put this value in first equation if you put this value here in equation a then you will get t2 is equal to t0 by 4 so now finally we get in this particular shaft we are applying twisting moment t0 here and the resistance here is 3 t0 by 4 and the resistance here is t0 by 4 and once you get this then you can easily calculate the tau max value once you get this then you can easily calculate the tau max value at x1 and you can calculate the tau max value at x2 a tau max value at x1 you can calculate by taking tau max value at x1 you can calculate by taking the torque at x1 and tau max value at x2 you can calculate tau max value at x2 you can calculate by taking torque at x2 at x2 what is the torque at x2 the torque is t0 by 4 and at x1 what is the torque at x1 the torque is 3 t0 by 4 following what following the concept of either side so you see either side is a powerful concept to calculate the load and the beauty of the subject is that you don't have to use this concept only in one chapter only in one chapter you can use this concept throughout the subject this entire mechanics of solids subject can be made very easy and very simple by following this beautiful concept to know about such more beautiful concepts please follow my crash course on mechanics of solids that is going to start on 8th of december at 9 30 morning on an academy learning app so so let's go ahead and try solving this here we have 3 t naught by 4 3 t naught by 4 and here we have my dear friends t naught by 4 and this this one you'll get 12 t naught by pi d cube and this one you'll get 4 t naught by pi d cube naturally out of these two values the first one is the greatest one so therefore the first one becomes the answer if the first one becomes the answer you know second option is correct so whenever you have a shaft with both ends fixed do remember this that you will have to you will have to use theta overall is equal to zero theta overall is equal to zero is something that must be remembered that must be memorized that must be embedded my dear friends to solve such problems now let me take you to the, this uh, next problem that they asked in 2011 uh, 2011 was the year when I wrote gate and I very quickly and very easily solved this why because uh, the good thing about mechanics of solids is that if you know the concept this is all about concepts 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 and concepts if you know the concepts then problems can be varied in you know thousand possible ways but if you know the concept concept cannot be varied there are two three concepts that's it 
and two three concepts can cover one entire chapter here you don't have to learn so much of theory you don't have to you know mug up you know five or 50 different formulas big big formulas no nothing just remember two three concepts and that is going to help you solve one entire chapter anyways here they are telling you here they are telling you the theta value at c and they are asking that if theta value at c is theta then what is going to be the dia value I mean first of all let us approach theta value only so theta value will be theta at c can be written as theta a b plus theta b c now theta a b and theta b c we are going to use the formula but natural we are going to use the formula tl by g j and tl by g j isn't it and then you have the twisting moment value same here then you have whether you calculate for AB segment or you calculate for BC segment either side is the concept now you must realize that how beautiful this is either side is the concept so you have the same twisting moment and the twisting moment can be taken as common and then G is also common here and J will have pi by 32 so i'm writing it out of this entire thing length of one segment is l and wherever the length is l there the j value will be based on 2d and wherever the length is l by 2 there the j value will be based on d pi by 32 we have already taken out so we get what we get sir we can take 32 to the numerator and we get L common further and we get D raised to 4 also common further. We are left with 1 by 16 here and we are left with 1 by 2 here. 1 by 16 plus 1 by 2 will become 9 by 16. 1 by 16 plus 1 by 2 it will become 9 by 16. Continuing from here we get theta is equal to 32 tl divided by 32 tl divided by pi g d raised to 4 multiplied by 9 by 16 and then my dear friends as you know 16 and 32 16 and 32 they are going to get cancelled and you will get what the hell it just switches automatically i don't know so you get theta is equal to 9 into 2, 18 TL divided by pi G D raised to 4. From here you get D raised to 4. From here you get D raised to 4 is equal to 18 TL divided by pi theta G. This will give you eventually, this will eventually result into 18 TL divided by pi theta g power 1 by 4 so this is the final result congratulations once again you get two marks 18 tl divided by pi theta g so you see i'm not using anything new in in almost all the problems i'm repeatedly using the similar things again and again and again and again and again now let us try solving this problem that they asked in 2012 that they asked in 2012 this 2012 problem is what it is that the shaft is supposed to transmit 50 newton meter torque allowable shear stress value is 140 megapascal with a factor of safety of 2 we'll have to use they are asking the minimum allowable design diameter this is a 2 marks problem but believe me guys this can be solved within a matter of 30 seconds that maximum possible shear stress must be less than the permissible shear stress maximum possible shear stress can be written as 16 t by pi d q and permissible shear stress is given to you 140 divided by factor of safety and factor of safety is what factor of safety is 2 now sometimes students ask me 
that if this is the allowable shear stress already given, why I am dividing by factor of safety? If this is the allowable shear stress 140 megapascal already given to us, then why I am dividing by a factor of safety of 2? My dear friends, in such problems, please don't apply so much of logic and so much of brain. Just remember if factor of safety is given, then you'll have to use that factor of safety. That's it. Why? Because just to remain safe, suppose 140 is allowable otherwise, but just to remain safe, I want to allow further less. I want to allow further only 70 megapascal. So I get, okay. I get what I get I get T value is already known to me 50 Newton meter and then my dear friends we have on the right hand side we have 70 if you solve this you'll get D must be more than 15 point something I suppose 15.38 around and then you can go for the nearest greater value. Why nearest greater value? Because you're getting greater than sign. So you can go for nearest greater value. And that nearest greater value is nothing but 16. Dia must be, dia must be minimum 16 mm. All right, minimum 16 mm dia is acceptable. Once again, you get two marks. Let's go ahead and try solving this 2015 problem that they asked for two marks. This is a problem based on hollow shaft. A hollow shaft of one meter length is to be designed for power transmission capacity of 30 kilowatt at 700 RPM. The permissible angle of twist is one degree. That's it. The angle of twist cannot be more than one degree. Inner diameter is 0.7 times the outer diameter. Modulus of rigidity is 80 gigapascal. Then we will have to calculate the outside diameter of the hollow shaft. So because the angle of twist is given here, naturally we are going to start with, naturally we are going to start with the angle of twist formula. Angle of twist formula is nothing but TL by GJ. Now theta is given to us as 1 degree. Theta is given to us as 1 degree. Let us change that to radian. If we change it to radian, we get pi by 180. T value is, T value is not known. Actually it is known. It is indirectly given to you with power and RPM. So with power and RPM, you can calculate the T value. You know the power formula. You know the power formula from here you can calculate the torque value torque value is gonna be 60 p by 2 pi n and power is given to you as 30,000 watt rpm is given to you as 700 guys please remember this and also remember that using this formula whenever you will calculate the torque using this formula whenever you will calculate the torque then you'll get the torque value in newton meter then you will get the torque value in Newton meter. All right. So this value you'll get in Newton meter. This value you can calculate and you can put it here. Um, let me tell you the exact value. I calculated it. It's going to be 409.25. 409.25 into 10 raised to 3. The length value is 1000 mm. And then my dear friends, G value is given to you as 80,000 megapascal. J pi by 4, D outer raised to 4. Like this is a hollow shaft, no? This is a hollow shaft. So we have D outer raised to 4 minus D inner raised to 4 because we are removing some material here. So D outer raised to 4 minus d inner raised to 4 and d inner raised to 4 I mean d inner is given to you as 0.7 times d outer this is how you can write the polar moment of inertia this is not pi by 4 this is pi by 32 I'm sorry about that this is gonna be pi by 32 
Now you can see that you have only one unknown left here and that one unknown is nothing but d outer. So you can solve for that d outer value. If you solve for it, you'll get somewhere around 44.521 millimeter. So this was a very simple problem. You see, if you just know the power formula and anyways, you know, I believe 90% of the people know about the power formula 2 pi nt by 60. So this was a straightforward problem. Now this one 2016 problem that they asked for two marks is rather an interesting problem. This one is an interesting problem. Why this one is an interesting problem? You think about it that why this is an interesting problem. My dear friends, they are giving you a shaft that is coming out of the board and then you have a horizontal lever attached then you have a horizontal lever attached parallel to the cross section of the shaft parallel to the cross section of the shaft a horizontal lever has been attached here and then at one end of the lever you are applying upward load at another end of the lever you are applying a downward load just like you hold the steering of a car just like you hold the steering of a car and you try rotating it. All right. So similarly, you are trying to rotate this downward force and upward force. Because of this, the shaft will start experiencing some twisting moment. Because of this, the shaft will start experiencing some twisting moment. P and P are separated by a distance 2L. So the shaft will experience the twisting moment p into 2l and because of that twisting moment because of that twisting moment the shaft is going to have some angle of twist at the end if the shaft is going to have some angle of twist at the end the lever will have no choice but to move up and down this is how it is going to look like that end of end of the this is the end of the shaft at the end of the shaft you have the lever attached and then the shaft is subjected to some uh, some you know twisting effect the shaft is subjected to some twisting effect that twisting effect is nothing but 2 pl so because of that twisting effect the shaft is going to have some angular twist and when the shaft is going to have some angular twist then the lever will have to rotate you, you try visualizing it this end of the lever will go up and that end of the lever will go down something like this so can you relate can you relate this linear displacement at the end of the lever with the angle of twist of the shaft we can very clearly relate this from the triangle we can see delta divided by l is equal to tan theta if theta values are very small we can write this theta now you will say that how do we know that theta values are very small so in mechanics of solids all the deformations as long as you are dealing with the structural materials as long as you are not dealing with rubber or something all the deformations in some in entire subject deformations will always be negligible keep that in mind they, they will be very 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 small so tan theta can be written as theta and then you have delta is equal to then you have delta is equal to theta multiplied by L delta is equal to theta multiplied by L now what is theta theta is nothing but TL by G J now let us put the value of T value of T is nothing but 2 P L value of T is nothing but 2 P L and J value you already know in terms of dia but if I change it to radius it is going to be pi r for power 4 divided by 2 so this finally you will get as 4 P L cube divided by pi r power 4 into G this is the final answer
so which option is correct fourth option is correct congratulations once again you get two marks now let us try solving this problem that they asked for two marks in 2016 this two marks problem is a comparison problem between a solid shaft and a hollow shaft so between a solid shaft and a hollow shaft we have two circular shafts same material this is one main thing same material means what g will be same one is solid one of the same length this is another important information and they have the same polar moment of inertia they have the same polar moment of inertia and they are subjected to the same torque also they are subjected to the same torque then what will be the angle of twist relation between them like uh, angle of twist is going to be equal or whatever this is something we have to crack so this is a very easy problem naturally why because you have you have my dear friends you have a solid shaft and you have a hollow shaft and solid shaft is solid shaft is having same material same material means g same same length and then same polar moment of inertia and then same torque now you know even even somebody who just knows the formula tl by gj he can directly tell just after reading the problem he can tell the tl by gj tl divided by g into j that's gonna be equal and if t into l divided by g into j is going to be equal we immediately conclude that theta s is equal to theta h we immediately conclude that theta solid is equal to theta hollow so either first option is going to be correct or the fourth option is going to be correct because theta solid is equal to theta hollow is given in first one and in the fourth one now we'll have to compare this this particular thing then what about the shear stress now shear stress formula is what maximum shear stress formula these are the maximum shear stress values by the way these are the maximum shear stress values it is given tau h is the maximum shear stress in hollow shaft and tau s is the maximum shear stress in the solid shaft so we'll target the maximum shear stress values what about the maximum shear stress values maximum shear stress value for solid is going to be t by j multiplied by r max for solid and maximum shear stress for hollow is going to be t by j multiplied by r max for hollow all right just in case if this confuses you we have torsion equation tau by r is equal to t by j so from here you get tau is equal to t by j multiplied by r if you want to get maximum tau at one given section you go to maximum r now why i'm not using that 16 t by pi d cube thing why i'm not using that 16 t by pi d cube thing actually you can use that but using this fundamental relation using this fundamental formula is going to make this even more simpler is going to make this even more easy why because t by j and t by j are equal same torque i'm sorry same torque and same j you have so t by j t by j is equal ultimately it becomes a fight of r values now we'll have to compare for the r values that which one is going to have more r and which one is going to have less r my dear friends it's given that polar moment of inertia is same so let us compare the polar moment of inertia let us compare the polar moment of inertia we have polar moment of inertia of solid and hollow similar for solid it will be pi r power 4 divided by 2 for hollow it will be pi r power 4 minus pi r inner power 4 divided by 2 pi by 2 pi by 2 pi by 2 they are going to kill each other pi by 2 pi by 2 pi by 2 they are going to kill each other and we are left with what we are left with rs raised to 4 
and this side let us take rh raised to 4 common then we will have inner dia of the hollow shaft divided by outer dia of the hollow shaft power 4 this value this ratio is less than 1 because it is the ratio of inner dia and outer dia this ratio is less than 1 and let's call it by the name beta so if we call it by the name beta we get rs raised to raised to 4 is equal to rh raised to 4 and 1 minus beta raised to 4 from here you'll get rh is equal to rs divided by 1 minus beta raised to 4 power 1 by 4 isn't it so now what do what, what is what is the conclusion that we get here the conclusion that we get here is that because this denominator is less than 1 because beta is less than 1 this denominator is going to be less than 1 and if this denominator is going to be less than 1 this denominator thing is going to be less than 1 then my dear friends you know something divided by less than 1 will become a greater quantity will become a greater quantity so we conclude rh to be more than rs by the way for same polar moment of inertia rh will have to be more than rs intuitively you can figure it out so if rh is more then naturally tau h will be more and if rs is less then naturally tau s will be less so guys we go for this one the tau s must be less than tau h this is how we completed all these one mark and two marks problems i just hope that you got it i say it again tomorrow at 7 pm don't forget to catch me in the special class on free vibrations on an academy learning app why because i'm going to tell you and i'm going to make sure that you guaranteed way you get two marks coming from free vibrations free vibrations is a topic from where they have asked one problem almost every single year so make sure that tomorrow 6th december lock the time at 7 pm in the evening please watch my special class for free based on free vibrations you see free vibrations available for free so just click on the bell icon just to keep receiving the notifications of my videos and do subscribe for various packages using my code empty empty live to get 10 percent discount Thank you very much for watching this session.